day dear parents and learners welcome to today's social studies class i hope you are all doing fine our topic for today is the spread of pastoralism in africa the types of pastoralists to start off let's look at different types of pastoralists and um, in forms of pastoralism we have the pastoralist of the sahara the pastoralist of the sahel the pastoralist of east africa pastoralist of southern africa now as we learned in the previous lesson the first forms of pastoralism were noted and seen in uh, the Sahara and later on in the Sahel and later on in East Africa. Then in Southern Africa, some uh, tribes, ethnic groups opted for this type of lifestyle. We are not saying that the Southern African pastoralists are descendants of the Saharan pastoralists. We are saying that they saw this practice for some reason or even though if they did not witness this practice they later on at a stage of life realized that pastoralism was the best form for them to live in there were maybe uh, hunters and gatherers before or crop farmers before as we are going to learn in this lesson but then they saw no you know what let's keep animals let's domesticate them instead of hunting so that's why we say that the Saharan are the oldest uh, pastoralists. They have the oldest form of pastoralism. Later, as years went by, is when the other tribes and other ethnic groups that make, migrated to places then also influenced the people where they found to also start opting for this lifestyle. And the others also... Throughout the years, they realized that no pastoralism should be our form of lifestyle. Let's look at the pastoralists of Sahara. Here are the pastoralists of the Sahara. We see that over the years, they've domesticated camels for the sole purpose uh, of uh, their long journeys because the camels are able to survive in very dusty temperatures with very little water. And it just made their lifestyle easier. Their camels made their lifestyle easier. But they didn't only domesticate camels. They domesticated as well cattle, sheep, and goats, as we will learn in the lesson. Now, this form of um, uh, lifestyle started more than 6,000 years ago in the Sahara, according to the Tassili rock paintings that date more than 8,000 years to be exact. At that time, wild animals have since disappeared from the region, including elephants, rhinos, and giraffe, due to the temperatures rising and getting warmer and warmer every day. So the rock paintings show more domesticated animals, such as cattle, sheep, and goats. They also show human heading cattle. The evidence of these rock paintings show that 6,000 years ago, Africans changed from hunting to pastoralism as a way of life. Remember what I said? Most tribes were first hunters and gatherers. They, that's the fastest way of living. They think, okay, I see a rabbit, I'll kill it, and I have meat for the next two days. Pastoralism, on the other hand, is another process. You need to domesticate the animal. You need to keep this animal so that later on it gives you more products the people the first people didn't think this way only later on is when they realized that no we are just killing these animals but soon we will run out of these animals why don't we domesticate them we breed them they give birth to their uh, uh, to other animals their own offspring and from there we have more products that will keep us for a lifetime so it took a very long time till Africans realized that. But as we know already, that they started this in the Sahara. So the first pastoralists of Africa were the Saharan pastoralists. However, we are unsure if they developed independently or got it from Western Asia. Remember also that in the first class, I did mention that this act of uh, pastoralism this way of lifestyle was first spotted in asia now we don't know also if people migrated 
from Asia, remember that Africa is very close to Asia. We don't know if they migrated to, uh, to our Africa and then they brought their customs with them. Or like I explained earlier, they were hunters and gatherers. Then they realized, ah, uh -uh, we are just killing animals and we, later on we'll not even have enough meat. Why don't we just domesticate them and then we keep them in a place where they cannot hurt us, but then we get even more products from them apart from meat. Let's look at the other form of pastoralism. Now, these are the pastoralists of the Sahel. And we are going to learn a little bit more about the pastoralists of the Sahel. This is what is present day Mali and Niger. Let's uh, look at what they were. About 3,500 years ago, the Sahara began to dry up due to climate changes. Remember that the Saharan desert was not always a Saharan desert. It had rivers and other things due to climate change. Then it, at a certain point, it started becoming a desert. So some pastoralists that were first Saharan pastoralists, they noticed that, that uh -uh, this climate is changing and we don't want to live in a very hot climate and maybe have to domesticate camels because they are the only ones who can survive very long uh, days without water. So they said, you know what? Let's uh, move away from the middle. Let's go to the outskirts. Let's go to the edges of the Saharan desert where there is still water. Now, some pastoralists moved their cattle to the outskirts, the edges of the Sahara, where there was water and grass was easier to find. These outskirts, these edges of the Sahara is what we call Sahel. And that's where they got their name from. And like I mentioned, part of it is modern day Mali, Niger, uh, or Niger, and Chad. So the pastoralists got their name, the Sahel pastoralists, because they moved to the outskirts, the edges of the Sahara, because the Sahara was becoming too hot. It was becoming a desert. So they decided we are not going to live in this type of uh, lifestyle. We are still going to continue being pastoralists, but we want a place where our animals can drink their water and eat their grass. So they moved to the Sahel, and that's where they got the name, the Sahel Pastoralists. Sahel Pastoralists live in temporary camps. The camps were surrounded by thorn fences, fences sorry, to keep out predators such as lions. They made their fences in order to protect themselves from predators. Here is a picture of pastoralists of East Africa, modern day Tanzania or Kenya. Soon pastoralism reached the east of Africa as we learned. These pastoralists sheltered in caves and under hanging rocks just as earlier hunters and gatherers have done. These shelters say, uh, served as safe areas where they could stay while moving their livestock. Other uh, pastoralists, they lived in temporary uh, shelters, but these pastoralists of East Africa lived in more semi-permanent huts, which were plastered with cow dung, cow poop, to make them waterproof. Women grew small crops and kept chicken while the men cared for the cattle, sheep, or goats. An example of this, this form of pastoralism are the Maasai in Kenya as seen in the picture. I think you have seen um, uh, the Maasai in other pictures on the internet before. Very tall people who wear very long uh, necklaces and they are very tall people. They live in Kenya. They are a tribe. So these are pastoralists of East Africa. They keep livestock such as cattle, sheep, or goat. Some forms of pastoralism like this as well, like the Maasai, can also be found in Tanzania. Let's speak a little bit about the pastoralists of Southern Africa. Here is a picture, the Kwekwe. 
The first people in Southern Africa were hunters and gatherers, like we know, the sun. But some began to adapt the pastoralism lifestyle. As we know already, even in Namibia, they are one of the oldest ethnic groups ever to live on the face of this earth. They were the sun people. They were hunters and gatherers. And they, dependent, uh, they were dependent on hunting. But they soon, at a certain point, some uh, 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 realized that we can't keep hunting. We need to change our diets. We need to see other forms of lifestyle. So they opted for pastoralism. Meat and milk also became a priority. First from sheep, goats, and then later cattle as well. These pastoralists gave themselves the name Kwekwe, which means men of men. And they named themselves Kwekwe because they were taller than their son ancestors due to their new diet. They were now having different bodies. They were not short like the sun way because you can't just be eating meat every day. As you already know, you need other things to help your body, your body grow other proteins and other stuff to help your body develop and grow. So as soon as they changed their diet, they also started now to develop. Pastoralists had more possession compared to the sun. They saw their cattle and other possessions as belonging to them rather than, a, a, uh, rather than to a group as a whole. Let's say we are all sons, ne? sun people. If Miss Luango, for example, would uh, hunt an elephant, Miss Luango would then proceed to call Leandre and her family, Anastasia and her family, and so on, to come and eat this elephant. Because Miss Luango and Leandre and all of you as son believe that that elephant belonged to us as a group. It's ours. It's not just for one person, it, it's ours. But with pastoralism, it's completely different. When I have a cow, that is Miss Luango's cow. It's not Leandre's cow. It's not Anastasia's cow or whoever. It's Miss Luango's cow. So the cattle belong to Miss Luango's cow, uh, Miss Luango's family, and Miss Luango herself. And that was how they started to view their possessions as well. Possessions belonging to individuals and families rather than a group. Now men became more important than women because they took care of cattle, which was the group's survival. Now it's what the group depended on the pastoralism, the domestication of cattle and other animals, the keeping of them, the breeding of these animals, the taming of these animals. So men now, because they did most of that job, they became the most important people. I hope you enjoyed this class. Looking forward.